We're at the last day of Mobile World Congress 2025 here in Barcelona, and it has been a fantastic show. And it takes a lot of people to put this show on, and we have two of them that are here, who are here, to tell us all about what's happening here at Mobile World Congress. And uh, Andy Bryant is part of the worldwide marketing team at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Adrian Kassbergen, is Senior Content Director also at HPE. Thank you for joining me today. And I want to say this has been one of my favorite MWCs. It has. It's been very busy this year. We've had a lot of people coming around the booth. It's been a, a buzz the whole time. And there's this thing called AI, I guess, that everybody's talking about. <laughs> yeah, it seems AI has been a hot topic during the show. This is possibly one of the biggest ones. Yes. I mean, yeah, AI has been a buzz, not just during the show, but for the last year, two years, and increasingly so. And uh, when we designed the content for this booth, uh, we knew that we needed to give prime spot for AI. And so what we're showing here in AI is not just generative AI, do a chatbot or, or what have you. Uh, we show how we use AI in network management, in uh, system management, uh, how we make AI very easily deployable by selling a complete rack that is completely provisioned hardware software to have AI up and running at a customer in a matter of hours to days rather than uh, months to years. So tell us about the booth. Has this been about normal for traffic? Has it been sort of um, more buzz because there are so many partnerships and AI is such a big thing? Yeah, we've had a lot of people interested in, in the, the big shiny, the cray we have at the back of the booth, but also a lot of interesting conversations from customers that are looking to get deeper into the technology. So last year, I think AI was kind of, it was a buzz, but it wasn't really, what can you do with it as business? It was kicking the tires. This year, we're getting more deeper conversations about how you can use AI to dramatically lower cost through operations, through AI ops for the telco network, how you can use it in the RAN with our AI RAN Alliance work. It's getting further and further embedded into the technology, I think. You know, I want, I, I have had a chance to see a lot of what's happening at the booths, but a lot of people haven't seen it from that perspective and through your eyes. So I want to take a walk through and just to see some highlights. Sure, so, yeah, absolutely. Great. Let's do that. Let's have a look at multi-vendor network management, where we combine the power of Aruba Central with the capabilities of OpsRamp. They use a common data lake in GreenLake that gives the opportunity for our customers to manage the Aruba networking elements, as well as all of their IT infrastructure, be it compute, networking, and storage, into a single pane of glass. We announced this week the industry's first enterprise networking switch with precision timing integrated, particularly useful for AI workloads, Open RAN or CRAN, and also for providing the precision timing you need to hand off between access points in a, a large public venue if you're running private 5G. So rather than having the precision timing feed coming in from, from satellites, this one actually has it embedded in the switch. Now let's roll around the corner. You are Aruba networking connected edge AI and private 5G solution. So here we've taken our private 5G stack, we've packaged it together onto a ProLiant DL325 server to create a turnkey solution. The objective here is to make private 5G as simple to deploy as Wi-Fi. So make it available to more enterprises with more scale. Okay, and let's have a look at what we're doing with FC Barcelona. As you may or may not know, FC Barcelona is rebuilding their entire stadium in place and for that purpose, they have vacated their old stadium uh, for a period of time. They're just back in it. And now we're completing the inside facilities of that stadium from a networking perspective. We're enabling them to provide their visitors maximum performance Wi-Fi and 5G uh, capabilities, as well as their back office, where we're connecting their signage, counting people, occupancy control, people tracking, all uh, using AI to uh, interpret the data that is coming in and help them make the best decisions. 
So what we're showing here is part of our high performance computing line, HPC. And in this case, these are platforms that are optimized for AI by using uh, very large counts of GPU capabilities. In the XD680 platform that we're showing here, we've taken out the compute tray, and that compute tray has eight Intel Guard E3 AI processors uh, to provide a performance that wasn't seen in this type of platform before. And for people who prefer uh, the NVIDIA platform, we have a sim similar solution, but based on the NVIDIA uh, H200 processor. Okay, so here we're talking about our disconnected cloud for sovereign environments. So we've built a private cloud solution for enterprise customers, but we found that some customers, particularly in the defense space, don't like the private cloud to be connected to the public cloud. So we've, we've put the, the management solutions for that into the system itself, so that we can run a completely disconnected sovereign or private cloud solution. So what we're showing here is part of a supercomputer straight off of the manufacturing line. And this is only a small part of the entire supercomputer. We see here on the left side, a, a distribution rack for the liquid cooling that then goes over the top to all of the compute racks. We can have in a situation like this, up to four compute racks. And then we have, uh, depending on the customer's needs, 5, 10, 20, 30 of those rows of compute racks. Each compute rack consists of eight modules with eight servers, so 64 servers in one cabinet, which leads to 81,920 CPUs, uh, or CPU cores, or uh, 448 GPU in a single cabinet. That creates a lot of compute power. The liquid cooling provides more efficient cooling than would ever be possible with uh, air cooling and uh, also provides better sustainability where we see that some of our customers uh, hook up the liquid cooling system through heat exchangers to warm, for instance, community pools or apartment buildings. And into our solutions for telecoms operators. Here we're talking about our HPE ProLiant DL110, Gen 11, and the Gen 12, which is just around the corner, including the Intel Xeon 6 latest generation of processor with Granite Rapid D, providing solutions specifically for RAN. And here we're also showcasing the Nokia Cloud RAN unit. Adjacent to Telco, we have service providers, the DL340, optimized for the service provider market, and then into compute optimized for Telco Core. So in this case, we're showcasing the AMD Epic processor, optimized for high performance, high reliability, and low power, for, particularly for Telco Core workloads. So what we're showing here is a solution that we're very proud of, which is the HPE Private Cloud AI. In this case for Telco Ops, but there is a regular business uh, solution as well. We've developed this together with NVIDIA, and the, the key of the solution is that it has all the hardware, all the software, all the utilities, all of the tools on board to get uh, private cloud AI up and running in no time at all. And not just that, we sell it ready to run, but also uh, in different sizes for different customers. So if you're a small customer, you start with the small system. If you're a medium-sized customer, you get to the medium, large, or even extra large. And uh, so this is very popular, both for customers in their end environment, they can get a AI solution up and running in a matter of hours to days, instead of months to years. And over here, we can see the ProLiance DL384 Gen 12, including the NVIDIA GH200 Grace Hopper Compute. In this place, we're showcasing how telcos can mix or separate out um, processing for RAN and processing for consumer workloads that might be running on the same compute out at the CRAN site. So this is, for me, really an exciting part of our show floor here. Hope we, we can show this at many of our uh, exhibits, showing the Spaceborne computer. Since 2017, we've had computers in the International Space Station, starting with the Spaceborne 1, just running benchmarks, now the Spaceborne 2, that is actually providing cloud services to experiments on board of the International Space Station. The chart behind me, I'm not gonna go through all the detail, 
uh, but it shows how much time is saved on the International Space Station in physical time and in compute time by having these supercomputers on board. So I hope you enjoyed our tour over the show floor as much as thousands of our visitors did and that you will come back to us next year. Yep, yeah, we'll see you in 2026. Thank you.